So let's say we have a sampler here. In the sampler, I have a drum loop, okay? And I already defined here the start point of this, which is the first beat, and the end point here, which is the, um, yeah, you can see of the next bar, basically the kick drum. So I define the end point exactly here. So when we go out here and go back to the beginning, it's a perfect loop. So we have a kick, snare, kick, snare, and then it goes back to the first um, beat, right? So when we play here with our keyboard, it ends here, right? So this is perfectly fine. Um, the first problem is we can pitch this because key tracking is on. So if we go up or down on the keyboard, we have different pitches. So we want to deselect this because we want to have the drum loop in the same pitch. So it doesn't matter where I play, which key I play on the keyboard, it's always in the original pitch. The next problem is when we play on the keyboard, we have different velocities. So sometimes it's quiet, sometimes it's way too loud. So it depends on how hard you press the key on the keyboard. So we dial down here the velocity sensitivity to zero. So every time we press a key, it's always in the same pitch, it's always the same loudness. So it's perfect for drum loops. So now that we have this, we can of course switch here to a loop mode, which is basically like, um, yeah, holding the key on the keyboard and it loops over and over again. The problem here is when you play a long note, then at some point maybe this drum loop goes out of synchronization because you have a slight, you know, a slight offset here. It's not really on beat, so maybe after 10 minutes or so, this becomes out of sync with the, comp with the whole song, with all the other elements in your um, project. So um, what we do instead is we go back here to the one-shot mode, so we trigger it every bar. We do something like this, right? So we end here, maybe do this like this. Okay, we trigger this over and over again. So now you can see the drum loop is not really in sync with our project tempo, because the loop basically cuts off at this position here. So this needs to play back faster. So what we do is we go to a kind of a warp mode or stretching mode. So we switch this to textures. And we also switch this here to uh, freeze playhead on. And when I click this button, this speed knob here becomes a play position knob. Okay, so now we can define where we want to play in our uh, drum loop. So when I play this back, this sounds like really uh, wrong. Like this, because we don't move the playhead at all. We have to do this here. Okay. We do this by using a phase signal or some kind of ramp signal and my preferred way of doing this is using here the ramp. And we switch the ramp here to synchronization. So we have the ramp exactly here four beats long. So a zero to one, it's exactly measured in, in four beats. And, um, or four sixteenth notes. And when we want to have exactly one bar here, yeah? uh, then we dial this here to 16. So 16, 16 note steps, it's this one bar, okay? So all we want to do is basically play now this uh, with this. So this modulates the position. And then we go here to this. And now when we play back this, it's perfectly in sync. Right? So it's maybe too slow, so we go back here to 8, which is half of 16. Right, so now you have here basically a loop in the sampler that's synchronized to your project tempo. So now we can slow down or speed up here the tempo of the project. And we can also define the grain setting, how, 
how many cranes there are and how fast they are played back. So it can have some kind of influence about how the granular sounds. So the grains here are a bit longer. And then you have also this motion button here or motion knob where you can change um, how the frequent or how the grains change over time when they are played back so we can spread them out a bit more. So now you have um, the drum loop synchronized to your project tempo. When you change the project tempo, everything is perfectly in sync. You have stretched basically this drum loop here. You have influence on how the stretching sounds, how it changes the sound, and um, you can settle with whatever you like. And you have also this ramp uh, modulator here, which you can influence. You can double time the drum loop or half time the drum loop, or maybe take some odd numbers in if you want to. And you re-trigger this over and over again here with this, um, yeah, with this note in this note clip. And this is basically the the only way to uh, slice or synchronize drum loops in the sampler to your project tempo. It's probably also the easiest way. And um, yeah, it's also a lot of fun to play around with all these parameters and see what comes out of it. <laughs> 